ready to go. Oh, the gantry go. drops and off they go. The stacked field of juniors. Everybody away clean. Spaniard That's the good close news. close to us. Devassa, second from the left, got away well. To the right of Will Short. That's going to be the Dane, maybe. Also heading out well. Sweden, 520. Arvid Soderman. In the background, Keegan Focht in the South African colours. Great start. 5.11. Great start from Orlan Joe Kotro. Enoch. 5.16 from Czech Republic. Florian, it's all happening. Joe Enoch, superb start to get himself to the right-hand side of the leader there. And the leader appears to be from Hungary. It's Zeman from Hungary. Daniel Zeman, I think. There's a European champion right there with form. Hinger up there from Denmark, Quattro from France, Olofsson, Sweden. Three separate attacks that are converging down the left-hand side of this wide river Naretva. But it is Zeman who's leading him at the front. And those other two chasing attacks are concertinering onto his wave. It will slow down soon. There'll be some chaos still. France, that's a very distinctive boat for the Frenchman there. That's going to be easy for us. Guys start mixing. Great start for Joe Enoch. Nottingham Canoe Club works with a strong, strong, well, the strongest group in the country at the moment in the UK. So there you go. Hungary, Spain, Great Britain, France, Sweden, Denmark. And Czech thank Republic this side. And in such a cluttered start, everybody keeping their noses clean. Zeman doing a good job out the front there. Holding off. Maybe a challenge coming on his right side from Sweden. Squeezing Joe Enoch back into the V. <laughs> Early days for the V. The Frenchman doesn't get out quick enough. There's a little bit of contact. Survived so far. It's still not over, though. Now they're out the woods. Nicely done. That was. You can see the chaos up there. That Frenchman ducked out, took out the red boat. So France currently coming out onto the outside again of the group with the white paddles and fancy looking boat. With the red boat just about out of shot now that suffered through that. 5.01 is Ivas Ivan and, and uh, Ivansko from Hungary. He's going to get back up there. He's the white hat, white shirt there. 497 is the Spanish boat forward. of Victor de Vesa. Argentinian on the far side in the green boat that we saw yesterday. There's the Frenchman again, trying to make up ground. And there's the boat he took out, which 504. That was the Dane, Anton Hingert. And there, Will Short making his way up the outside of the group. Wisely coming wide on the group. And I think he's going to make contact with the back of the group by the time they get to the turn. Meanwhile, it kicks Spain, off Spain, big front. move. Spain pushing Hungary on. Trying to separate those two Hungarians. The two Hungarians will have a desire to get back together. But Spain up to the task. He's been forced into the lead. He'll let one of them through. But the other one will attack on the other side, I'm sure. Boom. There goes the second attack. And if I was Spain, I would give it up at this stage. You've got two people who are intent on getting together. He's going to have it's to go it's next. It's too tight. He's, tight. He's had to lead in the end. Forced into the lead by the two Hungarians who clearly are happier together than they are apart. The Swede there, 520. Soderman. 512 in the back, Dave. Riley Smith. Yeah, out of Cape Tonian with the Orca squad. Lifesaver, multidisciplinarian surf ski paddler. And making steady progress up the left there. Will Short leading his group to regain contact with those front runners. Back to the senior women, C1, same length boat, a little bit heavier, 10 kg. World champion Ludmilla Babak, very hard to see beyond her for a win here, but we did see in uh, the short course, we'll get to it in a minute, but we'll give you the starters first. Magarayan from Moldova, Ohashi, Japan, Novo from Spain, Kodotova from the Czech Republic, she's one of the players. Germany's Anek Wehrmann, also on a good day. Grzel Kovacic from Poland, Vevakova from the Czech Republic, Babak, there's your world champion from Ukraine. Tishkanova might have something to say about it. Huey, 
may be one of the front runners early on. Matkovic from Hungary, Glizan from Moldova, Martin from Spain, Voltan from Italy, and on the outside, Sofia Kisban, who I think could upset the balance of power today. There's the two Ukrainians front and centre. Babak in the yellow boat and her teammate right next to her, Tishkanova, Tishenkova, sorry, from Ukraine. Japan, Ohashi. That's where much of the attention is going to be focused on this race. Tishankova and Babak. Being called down to the start gantry. Keeping it straight, the essence of this stage of the game. Quite Keep busy on the left-hand side, not so busy over on the right. Keeping it directly into the current so that it's square for the start. As soon as the starters see them, they will call this. Kisban right at the top of your shot. There we go. A They're terrible, gone. terrible start for her, but she'll get going. <laughs> 5.41, quick away, Annette Vehrman. Top right is one to watch, is Kisban. Then the two in the middle, right in the middle, yellow and the yellow boat there it's is Babak. Babak. And she... I don't know, she didn't really look herself in the short course. Her running was definitely below par. And that's where Kisban won the short course race earlier in the week. So quick run down the junior boys. Candela, Italy, Sousa, Portugal, Zeman, Hungary, Devassa, Spain, Smith, South Africa, Vo Vo what do you say? Vocht. Vocht. South Africa, McLean, Canada, Ivansko, Hungary, Soderman, Sweden, Enoch, Short, Fernandez and Hinger all in there. C1, Ukraine, Ukraine. I think it's Poland to the right of Ukraine. That's going to be Grzel Kievich. Top right or top left in screen is Kisban. I think we're looking at Vehrman in the white boat with the Czech just to her right, Vevakova. Check two, Kodotova. That's the Moldovan. Elena Magarin. Elena Glizan in the shot. From Moldova. Angela Voltan in the Italian colored on the nose of her C2, her C1. Good news for the gang at Elmbridge. Will Short's made himself up to eighth place currently. No, just moved up to seventh on the uh, screen that I see. You don't see that, but uh, you can. If you look at live.tracktrack.com, all that digital information is available to you. That's live.tracktrack.com to any of our listeners. I am going to be a little bit biased this afternoon towards uh, our club athlete. I'm not even going to make apologies for that. That's part of the privileges. In the women's C1, the two big players are together. It's Junior men should be down at the bottom turn can, and that'll be spicy to watch Babak with that group. And Kiss Band together. And we've got game on on that one. That's going to be, there we go. There's your top group. They're on their way back already. A sweet sight for the team green there. So we are looking at Souza currently leading. Candela from Italy. Zeman from Hungary. Smith from South Africa. Divesa from Spain. Vogt from South Africa. Ivans Ivansko from Hungary and Short from Great Britain. Riley Smith goes by the nickname of the Bull Terrier in his Surf Life Saving Club. Tim Lodge up on his bike on the path there. <laughs> Spent a lot of time training and talking to Will. Good friends. There's a good, solid chase group. Only just behind this group. 
The real interest on this is how these youngsters are going to manage the top turn. It is going to be tight. It's going to be uncomfortable. And they, the portage for that matter. It's yeah, and we've got another whole lap to the portage. You mm -hmm. think it might thin out a bit there. The Argentinians caught up. They're always so, so strong, those Argentinians. It's now going to be a group of about 14, I think. Look at that. The top turn is going to be absolute mayhem. Canada's McLean in there also. The red shirt. Julian De Silva's been abandoned. Front end kicking off. That will help anyone who's in that group right now. Just stretch out the people who caught up. It's only going to be the Argentinian and maybe the Swede who remain in contact with that group. You mentioned Owen McLean. He's one of the youngsters who's done a lot of time sprinting and has overlapped that into marathon to work on his long distance. Out of Balmy Beach, Toronto, Ontario. So Portugal, Italy, Hungary, South Africa, Spain. The speed will fluctuate dramatically in this race. There'll be turns of pace. Will Short cleverly staying tight to the edge. He knows the rules going upstream. Be nice waves down there. The Hungarian flapping about a little bit at the back of the group, trying to find some degree of comfort. He's trying to get up behind the Portuguese, and he might be, yeah, he just battled off Short for that. Short ducks around the back of him into a nice V-wash. And the front group looking increasingly safe. The Argentinian hanging on though. Wow, all action at the front of the women's C1 as they go down to the bottom turn. So that's Babak Kisban, Veerman, um, Tishankova in the blue shirt on the right. 47 is Matkovic from Hungary. Uh, I missed the athlete at the back. Apologies for that. I will try and get you that detail. Just one second. And that's Ludmila Babak in the blue and yellow Ukrainian colors. It's Martin from Spain. I think, no, it's Hue from France. You can always tell by the loose hair for Hue. And then behind Hue is Vevakova of the Czech Republic. Forward goes Kisban. She wants to get to the turn first. She wants to dictate the path around that turn. Junior boys coming up towards us as the senior women C1 go down towards the bottom turn. We will get a view out of our window if the junior boys come past us. We'll give you some information then. In the meantime, you can see what's happening. Here we go. Portugal, Italy, Hungary, South Africa, Hungary, Great Britain, Denmark, I think. Yep, Denmark and Fernandes from Argentina. Close to this edge. Good skill level from all these boys. And anyone on the left side of that group has to be seriously stressing about their athlete now. Portugal are going to be uber cautious around this turn because they've had two penalties on this top turn already this weekend. I, just I know they're not happy about it, but it's going to be a sharp angle across. People on the right are going to be safe. It's the orange boat. It's the, the white boat on the left. It's going to be brutal. It's the third boy. It's the real killer. And it all depends on... The, and Souza's taking the tight line into that first boy. Super brave line from Will Short. He'll be out of trouble, but he's dropped back just a little. And here it goes. It's going to start at this next boy. It's going to be super uncomfortable. They're strung out, luckily. They're... Making contact with that second boy, but everybody seems to be through 
No contact between boats. Orange boat is going to oh, be a problem. Close for Orange, just oh, inside the third just boy. Just holding up the Argentinian and Great Britain there. And that's and all it takes go. sometimes. A little bit of bad luck. Joao Souza. Souza taking it to them. Ivanks go. Looking like he's not too comfortable. Candela with him, hoping for a lift, maybe. Here we go. Hungary take the lead. So much for not being comfortable. He's piling it on at the front now. It's group of four, group of three, and then there's three behind. They were all held up by the Dane Hinger on the turn. Rene Larson, you've got some explaining to do. You've just <laughs> taken my athlete out of this race, and I'm not happy. <laughs> if you're on, let's see your comments now about your Silkeborg. Group of four away, three. They're going to close down. There's lots of time left in this race. Only one Hungarian in this group. So top group, Hungary, Portugal, Italy, South Africa. Second group, Hungary, Spain, South Africa. Then it's Argentina, Great Britain, Denmark. Quick update on the C1 women's Kisban and Babak in control at the front. And it looks like they are slowly putting a bit of water between themselves and the chasers. I think Kisban must be sitting pretty here knowing that Babak's portaging was woeful mm. and on the short course. It looked like she was towing a ball and chain across the grass, uh, didn't it? On handbrake was on. Yeah, yeah. it was... Yeah, maybe maybe she's had a rough year in terms of running or whatever. I, I don't know. Seemed inexplicable how how slow she was. So Kisban, Babak, Tishinkova, Matkovic, Veyman, Huey, Vevakova, Martan, Grizelkovic, Glizan, Kodotova, Novo, Voltan, Ohashi and Magorian. That's your list of women's C1 in order. Pauline Grzelkowicz in the Polish colours now disappearing from view in front of the reeds. Currently in ninth position. Elena Glizan of Moldova. That's Nerea Novo of Spain. Back in 12th. Angela Italian, Volten. Italian just Italy. behind her in 13th place. She seems resigned to a race of her own here. Here's the lead two. And just behind them, the second of the Ukrainians. Tishinkova still in touch with the leaders. K1 men looks like it's a group of six now at the front, maybe seven, and then some 90 meters behind that group that got held up by the Dane on the turn, which was Short, Fernandez, and Hinger, I think. Yeah, they've got Enoch with them now as well. So a group of four or five even there. Hungarians back with them, Zeman. No, he's not. That was my mistake. So short, Fernandez, Dominguez, Enoch. As the women's C1 approach the portage. This will still be their full lap. Yeah, no portage on this lap for the yep. women's C1. It's just part of the journey for them. Only four big laps for the C1 senior women. There's the juniors now. Let's run an eye over what is happening at the front there because they are heading downriver on what will be their first portage lap. So still Souza leading as he has for a lot of the way. We've seen the quality of the Portuguese all weekend. Ivanks go from Hungary in the blue boat. Um, Vox from South Africa in the red visor or backward cap, who knows? You can see how far back it is to another group of five. That's with the other Hungarian, the Dane, um, Argentinian. But this front group, 
Smith of South Africa. So we've got two South Africans in there. Uh, Zeman from Hungary and Devisa from Spain. So a group of seven there. Keegan Vox, part of the Marisburg College group, being coached by Bridget Hartley. But that chase group has gone wide, running down the waves. I'm going to predict that that chase group will get there on the upstream leg. They'll gain a bit of ground while they're going downstream and the others going around the turn. And I think that gap will close. It's a big gap, though, 85, 86 metres. So seven boys still in contention. Two from South Africa, one, two from Hungary. Kicks off again. Italy pushing it in the green boat. Hungary and Portugal neck and neck. Two South Africans in that second row. And in the third row, we have Portugal. And on the far side, 5.03 is um, Zeman from Hungary. Abject apology from Rene Larson here. Sorry, Ivan. I will personally take him out in the club race on Wednesday. Absolutely. Thank you, Rene. We're all, we're all evens. <laughs> Two South Africans muscling their way up forward. It's a busy group, this one. Jasus are looking strong at the front. South Africans doing a good job. Hungary coming around the right-hand side, trying to take on the red cap of South Africa. Beginning to settle. Portuguese looks strong. That red cap in, in the first wave belongs to Keegan Focht. Big surf ski family. His dad's a big surf ski paddler, originally from the Seychelles. Moved to Durban. Like so many of the youngsters there, they'll they'll race marathons, they'll race over marathons and spend lots of time in surf ski. He was paddling in the back of a surf ski double with his dad when he was 10 years old. So lots of time and experience on the water. Blue boat of Hungary just struggling to get round that turn. Opens up a gap for the South African to get into the V and he's straight into it. That was um, Smith from South Africa, saw a door open and he was through it straight away. Second group just coming around the turn now. Led by the Argentinian, probably on probability alone, the strongest in that group. Third group just behind them. It's gonna be a big group if they get together. Mm -hmm. Portugal lead as he has for a lot of this race. Two South Africans, an Italian, uh, two Hungarians side by side there on the far side, Spain. Hungarian trying to get out and round the outside. Can only be thinking that he wants to come round the Spaniard. Not seeing him make any progress at this stage. He's still at the back of the group. The gap's still around 80 metres. But that's an 80 metre gap going upstream, which is bigger than an 80 metre gap going downstream in time terms. So this front group look like they're pulling away slightly. Hungarian moving up to the left of the Spaniard there. He just can't make up his mind whether he wants to be on the tail or on the outside. But either way, it's costing him every time he changes his mind. Meanwhile, round the top turn, go the two leaders, Kisban and Babak in the women's C1. It's not often at this stage that Babak has company. Normally, she's on her own and away by now. Babak being very cautious to avoid any contact with the boat as they take that tight turn around the can. Tishkanova also seemingly struggling to get round that boy. Now, we did note that the river flow is perhaps slightly higher than it has been any other day this week, thanks to the rain which fell in this region yesterday. 
So that will make those the turns at the cans, particularly for the sea boats, a little bit more tricky. Get the feeling that Kisban is just waiting for that first portage. And it's only, they've only got four big laps to do. This is already the second one, so she'd only have two laps to do on her own. But then, yeah, we saw um, Kisley not running too well on the short course portages in, you know, compared to Anderson. But then she ran very well today, didn't she? She did. So, so maybe for some of them, the short course isn't the primary target and it's just a slightly lower, lower intensity. Less urgency. But I do know that Babak will want this one. Well, the model is there for somebody that wants to make a, an early break on a portage and then look at a couple of laps on their own. If they've got the base and the self-belief. Gap closing slightly in the junior race down to 75 meters. Will Short con currently leading that second group. That second group will, they have got the quality in there to close the gap, but that front group is looking mighty strong also at the moment. Babak leads Kispan in the women's C1. And there's the front bunch in the junior boys K1. And that's why the gap's closing. It's a little bit sedate at the moment, but it will kick off for the first portage, which is coming up. There will be a mighty flurry into that because no one knows what can happen. Leo Candela in the green boat leading. Joao Souza with him at the front. Candela second at the Europeans behind um, Zeman of Hungary at the Europeans. So quality athletes for sure. Add in a couple of South Africans into the mix and you've got a super strong group there. Heading into Portage One shortly. Stress levels will pick up. Just cool heads needed here. Typically, Doesn't the Portuguese are well organized on Portuguese. South Africans usually pretty good. Hungarians can be a bit vague. Italians always a bit of a wild card. Through go the South Africans. Big move from Riley and Keegan. It's Keegan in the reverse red cap nearest the reeds. Devesa from Spain. Had a little look up the outside there. He's in the grey boat with the green tips. Joao Souza still holding the front part of this bunch as they come around Ooh, the right hand. Oh, it's going to get tight with that South African on the reeds with the Hungarian. He just saved it. Just saved that. Keegan Fock doing some yes, real horticulture in the reeds there. He did kind of set himself up for that. He pulled himself into that extreme right-hand side of the bunch, and that's always going to make you rub off a bull. Hungarian was trying to get around the back of him, but couldn't wait long enough and made contact. But he's back in the game and back in a nice, solid V-wash at the front there. Protected by Smith, at least for the time being. Here we go. So, Candela oh, goes left in the Portugal, green boat. Portugal, really nice. Italian, really nice. Italy, good. Here we go. Riley Another Smith, back. strong We've for got, South Africa. Focht, good. Oh, I don't know about Bit good. of contact on the yeah. rudder. That's a tidy portager right there. Portuguese is looking ominously good at this. This is going to split the group. That's a great portage. That is a great portage from the Portuguese. No doubt Rui Cantio taught him everything he knows because if ever there's a Portuguese success, Rui is right behind it. Candela, quick portage put in on the left. It's a tough break for these guys at the back. Who have we got there? I think we've got Hungarian and... We're getting four, maybe five away, and there's a split in the front Things bunch Things are going to change a little bit. Portuguese slowed down at the front. Italian goes through at speed. 
Spaniard on the left. Enoch in and away. Short in and away. Just watch his paddle. There we go. All clean. And away we go. We've got some good people still. The Argentinians there still. Italy, Spain. Keegan Focht still trying to scramble his way back onto the front of that front bunch. Hungarian, Ivanksko. Ivanksko in the blue boat. Lost a little bit of ground on the portage. It's a long way back, but it gives the second group a little bit of hope that there's a ladder through to the front now. Devesa from Spain. He's currently second. No, he's moved to the lead, sorry. Candela on one side, Portugal's Souza on the other. Gap back to Vogt in the red hat. He's got a lot of work to do because they're not giving he's him. He's not making ground at the moment and he certainly is trying to. Starting to catch up with the back markers in the sea race. That's uncomfortable for the South African. And what's even worse is he watching his mate Smith just cruising in that V-watch in front of him. The gap is closing. He he's going to have to burn some matches to get on there, though. De Vesa, De Vesa. looking super smooth. Portuguese really liking him again. Portuguese have looked so well drilled this weekend. They won the junior women's K1, and they're in with a shout in the junior men's K1. Riley Smith out of the same training group that produced Uli Hart, medalist earlier. He had a great day coming second yesterday. He defied our amateur predictions. So this group moving well. Remember to keep the comments coming or the questions or your cheers of support for your athlete on that YouTube feed. We really do appreciate it. And I know they do as well when they get to watch this later in the day. Hamish Lovemore sitting in front of his PC watching this. These two have opened up a bit of a gap on the chaser, which was Tishenkova from Ukraine. And then behind that is a massive gap back to Makovic and Vehman, Huey, Martin and the rest. So this is a four lap race. They're halfway through it right now. They haven't done a portage yet. Have they, ha they? they haven't done a portage yet. So they're on the first full lap is done. Second lap when they completed, they'll come in for the portage. But as a four lap race, it's relatively short. It's 15 Ks the whole race. So the opportunity for a break Roughly at the halfway yeah. mark is completely doable. Yep. Makovic and Vehrman in shot there. Yeah, I mean, it's a relatively short race, isn't it? And, uh, you know, to break away after two laps on a seven lap race is a much, much it's a more big daunting ask. It's a big ask. Down they come to the bottom turn. Ludmila Bava taking that one pretty wide, so Kisban doesn't have any alternative being on her outside than to shadow that. Tishankova, you can see in the background there. Not completely out of contact. 12 seconds behind, according to our tracker. I think on the turns, that's a really difficult thing with mm -hmm. the tracker because you've got the, yeah, the, the angles and stuff. So it doesn't always give you real-time data on that. Babak. Happy for Kisban to go through. <coughs> in terms of gauging how they're going to attack it, what sort of form they bring into those portages and whether there's a strength or a weakness, which is going to be pivotal to the outcome of this race. Back to the boys. Front group unchanged. Candela still, still in the a front. group of five. Candela, Smith, Souza, Fox and Devesa. 43 meters back to Ivanko and Zeman, the two Hungarians. 
they'll be working together i'm sure and they'll be massively disappointed not to be featured in that front group there they are zeman not looking in too much of a hurry it's uh Vanxo who's doing the closing down in shot he's left his mate behind and then a big gap back to the chase four the chase four fernandez hinger short and enoch they are sitting in eighth to eleventh place i think they'll pick off the hungarian in the white boat who is not having the day he planned but the blue boat of Tamas Ivankso is going to make contact with that front group European champion it's Daniel Zeman I very much think that his day might be done that's handiwork from Ivankso that's a big close down that would have come at a bit of a cost but he can now settle onto that wave and hopefully catch a bit of breath yeah, when we get a, a close-up shot of him it, it's not the tidiest paddler you, know, you, you kind of think of hungarians being a bit more well let's call it stylish than that he's a little bit rough around the edges but he's certainly got a good engine in there Round comes the green boat of Italy to challenge South Africa for the lead. Box holding them off. We spoke about it earlier, Keegan in that red cap. 16 coming into this, so one of the relative youngsters in the field. Look forward to seeing him. South Africa produce a steady stream of quality juniors, don't they? I think... Uh, yeah, I think there's so many opportunities to race in, with the ski racing and the marathon racing that I think they're well drilled, fit lads. They've got the like surf ski racing also has a very different mentality to this. It's kind of on and on and off and on and off and on and off and it on. It does and teach and you a lot uh, of boat streetwise yeah, skills. It's, uh, Your boat it's management definitely, is uh, definitely sharpened by time yeah. in a surf ski and in a river marathon boat for that matter. Chase group closing slightly. Ivanks are still sitting pretty at the back. Time to compose after that prodigious burn to get back onto the front bunch, but down to the bottom turn can they come. Riley Smith leading him around the cans. Argentina putting in a strong shift in that second group and that gap is not terminal by any means well having seen Ivanso do it so successfully yeah. I think he realized that's completely that's doable, doable on your own they're gonna catch the Hungarian Zeman to make it a group of five which probably doesn't help them but there it is it's all possible that Argentinian is strong strong Will Short just get pushed out by the flow on that bottom turn? He'll make contact with that group again. Hungarian in the front group being squeezed out, I think, by South African there. And this front group, at some point, the two South Africans have been very nicely placed for quite a long time now. Spain and Hungary picking up the cheap seats at the back. Joao Souza finds himself on the right as they all head for the calmer waters on the extreme right. There's the Hungarian on his own. With Seaboat and the paddlers in front of him. Just behind him. Candela takes on the pull and the group strings out slightly, so the speed's fairly high. We're down to a 70 meter chase group from over 100 a while back. The gap is most certainly closing. Interesting comment in the uh, seaboat race. Iseline Hue. He's paddling in boat number 546. We'll hopefully catch her on one of the camera shots. 
with a rare claim to fame. She was paddling K1 under 23 in China at the World Champs in 2019, where she bagged wow. a fifth. So a conversion from K1 to seaboat C1. paddling. Conversion, is that the correct term to use? I'm not sure Does that the correct verb to is use. Is the usual process for that following a lobotomy? Or, or a blow to the head <laughs> at some stage? Or How does that work? Le canard, um, since we're speaking about nice Isleen. Okay, through go the South Africans with Vogt to the front there. Followed by Smith. Smith's coming up on his left. Candela in the green boat. Portuguese hoping the V will open, and it has. Spain's Devisa on the outside, and the Hungarian picking up the dog ends again. Really seems to be fighting a bit, the Hungarian. He's got two choices. He's gone for the inside one. But making hard work of it, it seems. Candela moving up onto the right, into the exposed position. If there's any movement from Foch to try and close down on the right-hand side, a little nudge moving right from Foch. Went to the same ones heading towards their first portage. Went to the same school that produced paddlers like former world champions Andy Burkett and Ann Stott. Babak just Trying managing to, to avoid sides contact for the portage, there. maybe. Not the, it's the portage right now. It's very hard. Yes, it is. So here we go. We'll see what Babak's running's like today. It was pretty woeful a couple of days ago. Paddle on the boat to keep it in. Up and out first. First out. And already an improvement on, well, I think it was Thursday, was it? We had the short course. Yeah, I definitely see a, a more urgency in it from Babak. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit more spring in that. It, it did look strangely awkward. Comparing the two, the I don't see the portage as a platform for the break here. I think the break no. will come on the water. Tishankova. Babak the first to put in. Measured on the put in and she's away. If you can portage like that today, surely you could have done that two days ago. Well... <laughs> You can afford to throw the kitchen sink at it because she's got three portages in four laps. But yeah, it's, it's not going yeah. to break the camel's back here. And she's got away and she's managed to bank a lead of about 20 meters as they exit. Has gone straight out into the deep water, lining up that first turn boy. Oh, look, Mila Babak now throwing a left. Side on to the current. Some reasonable gap she's got on Kisban there. We predicted Kisban would come out of the first portage first. And have been proven wrong for about the 23rd time today. Well, you, Dave. you like the kiss of death on them. So well, just I mean, don't just blame me. They're, they're, they're you, are, you didn't deny it. Oh, I saw it coming a mile away. They're actually saying, Lola, please shut up. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably not just the athletes, is it? It's probably quite a lot of people out there. Okay, so there's your first group of junior boys coming into portage number two. Candela, Vox, Devesa, Smith, Ivanxo, Souza, and then the chase group is a four boat group Enoch, Fernandez, Hinger. No, Zeman now with them as well, five boat group. Candela's always managed to be oh, in a decision-making no. place. A it's a four-boat group. Will Short seems to have dropped off, unless his track is not working. He's way back off that second group now. Oh, and there's a sea boat right in the oh, way as the oh, youngsters come into the portage. Bevakova in the middle of it here. Keegan Fox sees it, manages it. They're all going to get around, luckily, just in time. Let's have some common sense from the... Okay. Fock decides he's going to go left, boys. so cuts right in front of the sea boat. Nothing, no harm done there. He is very hard on the rudder of that boat as he pulls it out of the water. Oh, and it's dropped. Ouch. Let's hope all is well with that. Fock running straight through. Candela getting some 
fresh cold juice. South African juice, by looks of it. Didn't he have the South African flag on his juice bag? It's very There's, diplomatic. There is no will short in that group. He's a long way down, nearly 300 meters down. So something's happened to Will. We'll try and give you that detail as we get it. Focht is the first to put in. Candela is shadowing him, but Focht stays on the right-hand side in the fast water as they overtake the sea boats in front of them. Portuguese only just in the water now. He's been so strong up till now, but he's a long way down. That's Souza behind Ivanko. And the boys are strung out. They're being strung out by the South African. Great break from young Keegan Focht. Three. Three regroup as they get to the boys. It's going to be tight on the inside for and number the three there. It's going to be very tight on the inside for number oh, three. Oh, it's a little nudge, but luck. Calm heads, luckily. And the sea boat oh, is right no. in play at the apex, boy. Oh. Those two boats are going to have to go around the outside. Clever oh, from the South there. African to go on the inside. That was a sharp move. That was clear thinking. Riley saw Smith. that and read it and has worked to his advantage. If he wants, yeah. he can take a charge to try and bridge. but what a great job he did of that. Hats Ke off to Riley Smith. Keegan looking around to see where his mate is, and I think that's the reason for coming off the front. Candela goes back to the front where he's been, let's face it, for most of this race. More of the sea boats in front of them. Not too Luckily, bad on not the straights. Not, not that, on the turns, on but the it's... the turn a, is a nightmare. One, two, three. South Africa, Italy, and Spain. Here's an idea, just throwing it out there. Separate turn cans if you've got separate races. Oh, I know I'm asking for more on. hard work here, and the, the yellow shirts will roll their eyes at me. I think that's just impractical, I think. Oh, what's happening there? A sudden burst. I think that was a Spaniard just tapped the back of the... Uh, of the Italian boat. boat. ...as he was coming through. They've organised well, he this. He came right through from the back. The other boys moved out. So they've got themselves a plan here to pull this lead and stretch it out, and hoping to make it stick. They've got about 40 metres at the moment, and I think between them, they've already decided that this is how it's going to be. I think we'll see strong leads from all three boys. So it's Spain's Victor de Visa who has gone to the front as the three have now collectively decided that for now, we, let's corral the podium. They're on lap four of their six lap race. The issue of who takes which medal on that podium, they'll be happy to settle in the latter stages of this race. But for now, they would like to just safeguard their position at the front of the race. Keegan will have mixed feelings because he's got teammate Riley Smith hovering in the background and he's throughout this race been looking over his left shoulder and I'm sure that's to see where Riley is. Mixed feelings as in what? He wants him to catch up or he doesn't, Dave? He wants him. He wants him back ah, on there ah. as an ally. I don't think so. I think he's happy. Three away is a super comfortable. Provided you're all prepared to work and it seems all three of these boys are, then you're on a, a real, well, simple journey round provided the speed doesn't drop good day to Jason Ward watching this one Jenna Nisbet or Jenna Ward as she started her racing days brother you'll forgive me if I label him as a average to above average paddler but I think he'll get his, his butt kicked by his sister most days good to see you Jay Big gap back to the Hungarian and the Portuguese, Vanksho and Souza. But we've seen the blue boat of Hungary already catch up once. He's got the power. But these three are moving on. 
And moving on very, very well. That's a good burn from Devisa at the front. He came through like a scalded cat to take the pull, and he's certainly delivering full value for money to the two that are sitting on his wave now. Thankfully, a simple opportunity to get past the sea boats. That's it for now, as far as Devisa is concerned. You can see the speed of the changeovers. Whoever's leading goes straight to the front, and it's pretty much full on. It's pretty seamless. Yeah. They've only got 40 meters still on Ivanxo. Italian looking over his shoulder to see what the damage is. So the World Championships being led by an under 16. Remember back in Peter Maritzburg, you remember the two little guys who took on the Hungarians in the K2. That was one of the greatest things I'd seen, I think. Little message coming through that uh, the Belgian Martin Verschatz has a 15 second penalty for passing through the finish line. At this stage of the weekend, I guess that's pretty much inexcusable. It's been labored, it really yeah. has. And it does kind of blur the race by having these two races happening simultaneously, but there's really, the, the finish line is, it's as clear as daylight. Yeah. I mean, to, to, to mess up where the positioning of those finish boys is not concentrating. And look who's back. There we go. Three becomes five at the front. So strong in the catch-up, but when he's in the group, he seems to be really struggling, the Hungarian. Being in the group doesn't seem to help him an awful lot. He'd do well to get out the front and do some damage, I think. Portuguese coming up the left-hand side. Hungarian diving straight into the V-wash in the middle. Portuguese, gonna, oh, just a little bit of a coming together there. Portuguese saw a little window of opportunity, wasn't quite quick enough to get it, and the Hungarian took the wave. Portuguese have to suffer for a little bit longer before the group changes shape and he gets a shout at something slightly more comfortable. Dutch paddler Minsink has copped a penalty. So we'll spend the 15 seconds in the naughty chair on the next portage. Leonardo Candela at the front. Just easing back, not phased apparently by the two boats catching up from behind. Ivanks are bouncing the boat. Either waves as they go through, or maybe some weeds stuck on the nose. A little opportunity for anyone who's unhappy to change the shape of the group now, yep. but it's not going to happen. Candela strong. Seaman and Hinger from Denmark. They're 300 meters behind this lot. A long way down between them and this group. There's another group with Smith, Enoch, and Fernandez all together still making better progress. Do you see Candela pop his foot out of the cockpit for a second and put it in the water? Really? It's weird when that happens. So sometimes you get sweaty feet and you lose grip on the footrest and a bit of water will help that. So I know that doesn't sound pleasant, but you know, it happens. Old sweaty foot. Or an irritating bit of weed on your foot. Yeah. Or even worse, on the onset of dead leg where a little bit of cold water sometimes gets the nerves 
awake again. But that shouldn't be an issue for them. Sebo Paddler in front of them. So Candela. That's third place in the canoe. So we're coming up to the front. By the time we get to the portage, we're very close to the front of the women's canoe True. race. Tishankova quite happy to move slightly further into the middle of the Naretva to let the faster flying young men go past her. Vehement being overtaken by Smith there. There's Riley Smith who's Smith found himself all on his, on his own. own. Just in the middle tough, of nowhere. tough day for Riley. Soderman from Sweden, the front of the bunch. Enoch and uh, Fernandez. They're together, just the two of them now. This group with Smith, Zeman. No, there's no Zeman in there. Sorry, Abassia, Short, Cermak from Czech Republic, and the Bassian shot there from Spain, Dominguez. There's the front of the women's race, and Babak has not been caught. And she's off and away. That's the back of Kisban's boat there. We're getting close to second portage time now. And she might find herself surrounded by junior men K1s very shortly. I think we've got a little way to go. We should be safe all to get round her before the portage. Just cool heads needed here. I think they're going to go around it to the left. That's all good. Leonardo Candela doing the right thing. Keegan Focht flicking weed off the nose of his boat unsuccessfully. There we go. It's gone. A little bit uncomfortable for the Spaniard there. He's just having to move over. Kispan struggling with the steering as the group go by. Yeah. Oh. Everything's Rifting. okay. She's done okay with it. Everybody gets away on skates. Tight. Philip Fink in shot here. Team Deutschland. Joachim Fernandez of Argentina sitting in front of Joseph Enoch. They're making decent progress, those two. They're only about 150 meters behind the leaders. Working together, they could still have some say in the result of this race. Just looking through the start list, uh, just how excited it is to see Thailand there. Narong Sak Pongham. Yeah, unfortunately, they're not actually here. They didn't get their visas, but they did enter. They had intent to come. They had intent to come, and the visas didn't quite pan out for them. So Babak just about to suffer what Kisban suffered a few moments ago. Voltan officially out of the C1 race. They will all get past the Ukrainian before they get to the portage, which is the optimal outcome. Strange how the nose, the wave just drags her back into the traffic behind the lead yeah, boat. Sucks her across. You can see there, it's been sucked in. So it's Leonardo Candela who's going to be once again leading the bunch of junior men into the portage. Keegan Focht on his outside. Portage number three. And from that we can learn absolutely nothing, by the fact that there are reeds growing on the side of the river. <laughs> That's a great shot. So five coming in. Italy, Spain, South Africa, Hungary, and Portugal. 
Candela has been super smooth on his portages. A couple of little minor slips from the South Africans, but nothing tragic. Bit of contact at the back there between the Hungarian and the Portuguese. Hungarian just seems so uncomfortable on those back washes. So there we go. Most Candela people. goes left. Everybody else goes right for now. Keegan Fock goes like dragging his rudder over the edge, but it seems to be bulletproof at this stage. Fingers, toes crossed. <laughs> he is wearing a South African flag yeah. in his drinking system. That's got an eye for detail, Dave. It's the South African running the best out of the five. Blitz portage from Keegan Fox. We're missing the Hungarian at the moment. Babak up onto the portage under no pressure There's whatsoever. There's the Good. blue boat of Hungary. Away goes the South African. Followed by Italy. Keegs Fox leading. Candela. Portugal and Hungary again come out together and behind and they've got another long catch up to do it's the same three ahead as it was on the previous lap and they the, the uh, Portuguese and the Hungarian just coming up a little bit short on the running sections this time though it's Souza who's closing the gap on his own here's our sea boat race leader Ludmila Babak out in front where smooth, she's so comfortable smoothly away at the end of her portage so she's got one more portage to go one more full lap of the portage and then she can start thinking about that small short finish lap but keeks Vocht leading the field as they start lap five Candela de Visa, Souza, Ivanxo. Looking so composed. He's racing above his years. He really is. Denmark, Hungary, and South Africa. a long old journey if you're European champion and you're staring down yep. the back of quite a long almost three nearly 400 meter deficit it's not going to be your day and I'm sure he's used to being closer to the front than that Riley Smith shrugging off his juice to get more juice in the feed zone Tishankova Consolidating her third place in the women's C1 race. Hungry for a bronze medal. Ooh. <laughs> C1 is well separated now. 65 meters between Babak and Kisban. Between Kisban and Tishinkova is another 100 meters. Then another 200 back to... Matkovic and Veerman and Huey, then another 200 back to Martin and Vevakova, and then another 100 back to Guzelkiewicz and Glitan. Victor Devisa now pulling at the front of the bunch of five. They're on lap five of six full laps. Keegan Fox, Leonardo Candela, Joao Sousa in the boat with that red detail ahead of the front cockpit, and Tamas Ivanxo in the blue boat. Fairly measured, they all look comfortable enough to click away the kilometers on this lap it's the calm before the storm time for them they'll have one lap where they can settle regain themselves run a rule over their own bodies and see how their reserves are and just how far they can start thinking about going into afterburner territory Find out. We will see who will be the world champion, but before we see one 
We're closing in on the sharper end of this now. Spaniard, or well, Fox as well, has looked really quite controlled, hasn't he? Spaniard, they, they all look pretty good, don't they? Portugian, yep. a little bit suspect from the Hungarian, and maybe even the Portuguese. So the front three, Spain, Italy, and South Africa. On the water, the Hungarian is super strong. It's almost like he could go off on his own. If he just moved out, went on, he's, he's got a high boat speed. Divisa of Spain, the man who's at the front at the moment. Gives you an idea that I think that satellite single ping pongs off a couple of satellites and passing jumbos before it gets to the satellite of choice. So it's not 100% accurate, but it does give you a, a good overall summary of who's who in the zoo. Nobody keen to disrupt the status quo. And that's why it's a long way back to that chase pair, which yeah. is Enoch and Fernandez. Um, oh, got my names wrong there. Um, yeah, Enoch and Fernandez. Senior women just started their last lap. One more portage for them. But that race is pretty much done and dusted. The distances between the paddlers on that are insurmountable at this stage. Keegan Fock coming up from the outside. Nobody wanting to lead now. Hungary, go for it. Candela goes to the front. Hungary goes with him. Portugal stuck on the outside. He might have a pop at coming in. Held off by Fox. He's not quitting though. He's pushing on through. He just wants to get to the green boat of Italy. That's all. He doesn't want to lead. I think Fox sees an opportunity to sit into the diamond here. He's going to be attacked almost instantly by the Spaniard on his right. He's only just got there, and now he's having to move back into the V, and Fox is the one now who has to come round. I think the Hungarian's not the side to come. I think the Hungarian will defend. Could have been. Oh, we're not going to. We might see it. There goes Fox. See uh, if the Hungarian is going to try and slam the door on him. Yeah, he is. This bus it, is full. It, Sorry, it, but it was the wrong side to choose. I think. Yeah. I, can't say the Spanish wouldn't defend either, but I think the Hungarian does not like being at the back of the group. He's uncomfortable. So he's going to defend much more robustly than any of the other three. So maybe an error of judgment by the South African there. I'm sure his coach, Bridget Hartley, will be mouthing it'll be, it'll be okay. silently to him he's got the turn coming up he'll get around the turn quickly and cut into the front of the group on the turn i think portuguese finally having a bit of luck in that v wash he's had to work hard this is a nervy stage in this race this is the penultimate lap and Five is not a good number. They want to cover distance, but they want to cover distance without too much physical stress. And that's why they get a bit edgy when they're on the fifth wash, because they know that they're working harder than at least three other people in that group. It'll be too late to leave it till the last portage. Nobody wants to race five going into the short lap, so I think we might see some action coming out of this coming portage. You know the Hungarian portage in is a bit suspect. Be interested to see what Fox does here. I think he'll turn really sharp and then try and cut in. Oh, they're all turning sharp this time. He's, yeah, he's trying, he's trying. Fox is trying he to, he's managing to go tight, but so he's he lost tight a bit enough. Of he can come in across the front of the Hungarian. That's what he's got in mind. Slingshotting his way out of that corner. But it's all change anyway. Oh. It's the 
Portuguese <laughs> off the back. He did a super job of that. He pulled it off. And he's got straight to exactly where he wanted to be by the side of the leader. And hats off to him. There's no love lost between South Africa and Hungary in this race at the moment. Nothing untoward, but there's a great yeah. toing and froing. Yeah. Good decision making on the part of the South African. It's hard to turn sharp there because all the tail washes of all the other boats, he's at the back of the group essentially, all the tail washes are trying to force you out wide. So you have to cut inside those. Once they've all gone, that's when you saw him really turn sharply. But initially it's so, so hard to turn sharply because all the pressure on the side of your boat is pushing you out. So Candela in the green boat leading the junior men as they come up the extreme right hand side candela's paddles brushing the reeds with every stroke okay oh. we've got some serious news here the italian currently leading has a 30 second penalty oh, my word we don't know why yet but a 30 second that seems like a serious offense Be and you'd think we'd have seen a serious offense is that a technical, like a, a bag dropping in the water or something oh, like that? Oh, maybe. Maybe it's that. Yep. Because it certainly wasn't aggression or contact or... No, no, here's more detail. 30-second penalty for boat 528 for making a collision with 522 on the portage. On the second portage. Really? Either he knows it or he wants to do some damage now because he is piling on. But if he does all this hard work and then has a 30 second penalty, he's going to be very tired. His face is going to drop when he sees number 5 to 8 on that digital board as they come to the takeout. In fact, he probably isn't expecting Fox it. Fox is struggling on that wave there. That's all he's got, I think. If he drops back over that, he's in trouble. He's hoping that the Italian will slow but down. There, he's, they've dropped two off the back. This is a big yeah. move. And if there's a penalty coming, this is great for Kiegs Focht. He just has to sit on that wave. He's got, Keep to, his nose he's got clean. to stay there. It's he, tight. He's, on the, he's teetering on the edge of it, I think. It's hard to tell at speed. The wave obviously moves further back. But no, he's okay. He's organized now. Has somebody told the Italian he's got a penalty? Because his whole demeanor has changed. Where would that have come from? A bike on the bank? If it happened at the last portage, the decision would have been made since they... I mean, they've put in and paddled I mean, since if, then. if we know, presumably the team leader knows. But he would not be able to communicate it to him. I think he's going to find for the first time when he gets to the takeout. So, Candela with an impending penalty looming, leading as they come into the portage. Kiegs Focht sitting in second place. We're looking at Orlan Catro from France. Enoch and Fernandez. Not looking quite as bustly as that front group, but they're doing well. They're currently in sixth and seventh place. And the big drama in this junior. Here we go. This is it is down to three. Now, judge from the body language, he's going to see that penalty board as he comes up to the portage for the first time. And if you can read his face, and give us the text that goes into the speech bubble. Round the trees he goes, so he's got a short distance to go to the takeout. Leonardo Candela leading. So it was Keegan Fox. contact with the Portuguese on the portage that he's paying the penalty for now. Victor de Visa is sitting immediately behind Candela as they come into the portage. So green boat. I'm Italy. telling you, Candela doesn't know coming into this portage. Well, if he doesn't know, he's going to be mightily pissed off because he, he's put in a solid shift to get there and he's going to have to do another solid shift to catch up well, afterwards. Well, th 30 seconds, I think, is uh, on your penultimate portage is too it's, much to come back from. Yeah. Whew. 
as if this race needed any more drama. There it is. Wow. Candela trying to put himself into a dominant race tactic deciding position. And he's about to put that boat down and just watch as the other four canter past him. I mean, 30 seconds is massive. It's, it's a game, absolutely it's a game massive. And there we will go now, the 40-40 Is he getting word from the bank now? So into the porters that come, Keegan Focht looks like he's heading for the left. Candela leads them in. So Spain and South Africa are going to come out of this alone. If Candela can get at least two or three seconds. So watch this carefully. Candela got, comes in on the left. He's got the other two behind him, about 30 seconds behind. He's got to run hard, man. Run hard. There's the penalty board. He, Italy, five to eight. It says it's clear as daylight. He's now gone into the feed zone. Run hard. He's going to run through the feed zone. You've got zone. 30 seconds rest at the end of it. Put your boat down. He's rolling his eyes as he does that. But he, the naughty chair is at the end of the portage zone. Down this it goes. This is going to be go. an absolute nightmare. The longest 30 seconds of his life as Keegan Fox goes through. And Victor Will Visa. he come out with the other two? This is the question. He's got a little bit of help if he has. If he does. The other two surely will go through. We need a count. I should have set my stopwatch, shouldn't I? There go the first two. Keegan Focht. Now, a two-horse race at the front with Victor De Visa of Spain. They're both shouting each other to go. <laughs> you go, you go. They know that they've got That's the first two up. places here. Oh, he and he's off. Come on, dude. Where are the other two? With him. I don't see them. So they're there behind him. It's a lifeline for him that they're there. He's got the option. Come on, Candela. You've got this. One in, one in front, he can jump onto that wave. But there are your two race leaders now. Victor De Visa of Spain. Spain and South Africa. And with him, Keeg Focht. That's one and two. Look across. You'll see where the others are. And he's a man on a mission. He's only got one job. So we've got one full lap and one portage to go. And then... What is going to be an absolute cracker of a short lap into the finish. And as it stands right now, that gold is either going to Come go on, to guys. Spain or to South Africa. Candela. Oh, Candela's body language he's, is he's, 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 negative. He's now. been the daggers in and being twisted right now and it's hurting. If anyone can close the gap with him, it is the Hungarian. We've seen him close a couple of gaps so far. Focht can't believe what's happened. He's busy looking over his shoulder and wondering if they are going to regroup and whether there's any urgency. He was urging Devisa on, and I'm pretty sure we'll volunteer to take up the pull to try and extend that lead or at least keep the Italian off their back for the remainder of this lap. Disbelief on the look of the Italian fans as well. Oof. That could well be his dad, couldn't it? Italian fan in the stand. That's not. Oh, wow. That is such a tough break. The lapped athlete on the right there. It's a Slovakian. He's, one Croatian, of, he's a Croatian, rather. one of the hometown fans. He's going to get his moment of glory on the big screen. Sure, the local fans, I think that's the cheer you hear in the background. As Frank Husnak gets a spot in the limelight with one of the two from whom the gold medal is going to be decided. Right now, it's Victor de Visa who's doing the pulling at the front. There's the chase. With the and Candela takes over from the Hungarian. Oh. Is that too much? Yeah. It looks it. Mike Lagerak is with us. He says, no, no, he is absolutely convinced that um, Candela can catch by going solo. 
But Mike, your next comment is 100% right. It all depends how much has been expended, how much gas is left in the tanks. He did he's such a solid shift up from that bottom turn. He, he's actually pulled the predominant part of the yeah. race. So he has. He, he's burnt matches along the way. How much is left in reserve? Because he's going to have to dip into that turbo tank. I hope, you, I hope you're right, Mike, because I think the kid deserves a break here. Ludmila Babak. Coming into the portage for the final time. Oh, my goodness. It's pretty much not what the doctor ordered. It would have been a swim there. I think she's got time to swim. That sea boat is out of the water. She's having a good long slurp of juice as she comes down the uh, normal portage. And this will simply start the victory lap for Ludmila Babak. Running comfortably, pace is good going through that portage. A lot of that to do with the fact that she's under no pressure whatsoever. Wouldn't go so far as to say she's enjoying that, but she's very comfortable doing what she has to do. And there's the distance all the way back to second place and Zofia Kisban. The race is pretty much decided so bar a meteorite yeah. falling out of the sky. So it's a procession and we can look at the two best in the world as they come in front of the grandstands for the last time. Ludmila Babak powering away. She's going up to the top turn cans for the last time. Out of the water now comes Olena Tishankova. And what will be a second medal for Ukraine. My computer overheating problem before we started this race has ruined the spreadsheet that had all the oh no you're kidding the details on it. The world's I'm, greatest I'm spreadsheet. Down to yep, the world's greatest spreadsheet. So let me go across. Babak's had 12 finishes. Zofia Kispan in shot now. Consolidating her silver medal place. And nine gold medals up to this point. She is the most prolific winner in the women's canoe class ever. She's the only serial gold medalist in the women's canoe, I think. And Kisban may be a little bit disappointed today. Yeah, you could go into could have, should have, would have, but just not good enough on the day. Just 10% yep. short of where this woman has been. And that's the reason why she can enjoy this solitary march with the music playing in her ears as she comes down to the short turn cans and will start that extremely pleasant task of turning into the current here on the Naretfa to size up the gold medal for the 2024 C1 Women's Seniors. She's gonna, this will be her 11th medal from 13 starts. And that's not bad if you're av <laughs> working out averages. <laughs> I think my computer might have given up the will to live. The Czech Genius Florian coming past on the inside, enjoying a little bit of TV time as Ludmila Babak. Just a little bit of chop on the water here as the wind picks up in the afternoon. Remember, we've got the men's K1 race still to come. Starting at about four. Babak with the wind at her back right now. Five sixteen from Czech Florian. 
So, a split of interest here. This is a procession down to the finish. We'll catch up with Bakaba as she turns for her victory parade and she deserves every minute of that glory. But has there been any change at the front between Devisa? I can't tell you from the Keegan. data. My track track seems to be, well, actually, I think my computer seems to be on the blink. So, I think if there was a, you know, those machines that go ping in the ICU, it might be flatlining. I think it would be. It overheated during lunchtime and it's really not recovered <laughs> very well at all. I think it's so here we go. Spain has broken away. There's some big old waves down there. Ooh. South African is not far ahead. We oh. ha there's been a, a significant change yeah. in the top four here. Because the visa of Spain has pulled away. Then you've got Fock on his own and only just ahead of the Italian and the Hungarian. 50 meters now, that gap was 30 seconds. So basically the Spaniard is the same distance ahead of the Italian as he was when they left the portage and the South African is falling back. And we know he would have got at least halfway down to the turn before he fell off because we were still with it when we last saw them. So South African could be in trouble here. Yeah. It's Babak in the C1 race who is hugging the right hand bank. Might Before be. she comes more or less at the portage, she will then start taking a deviation into the middle of the river to start lining up her paddle into the finish, boys. Kisban, just in no rush, certainly no desire. I think you know when you've run out of time, don't you? It just isn't your day. Time or gas. One of the two, or both. But Babak it is who's going to be taking the gold for Ukraine and what is going to be a double medal day for Ukraine. Roughly when she gets to the portage takeout, she'll throw a 30 degree left. She's already started it right now. She doesn't have to worry about sacrificing a little bit of time by putting her nose into the current of the Naretva here. It's looking a little bit rough out It is a bit water. choppy out there. It's, it's suddenly getting difficult for yeah. Tishankova very difficult she looks really uncomfortable so what is happening here this is the afternoon wind which blows up from the adriatic so the current is coming down from the right the normal flow of the Naretva, and you've got the wind blowing over the top and it does create for choppy water that's what happened on the monday of the masters and it created deceptively choppy conditions small waves but unstable water but down to the finish small waves were unstable water besides comes the champion in the women's senior C1, Ludmila Babak of the Ukraine. She's been head and shoulders above all of the rest. She's going to come down to the line to claim gold medal for Ukraine and fist pump to claim it in the process. Congratulations to you. Great performance. She's able to let the composure drop now that she's finished the job at hand. Even Kispan's being very measured about bouncing through the waves now. Kispan is going to come home to claim a silver on this occasion. She's been there before many times behind Babak. And she must, must go home and wonder what the hell do I have to do? And these videos are gold for analysis as well. She drifts over the line, left it all out on the water. It's going to be a silver medal. Ludmila Babak taking gold. Silver going to Zavir Kispan of Hungary. Kispan, only one gold from nine finishes, five silvers, and I suspect most of those five were behind. Tishankova making up the balance of the women's C1 podium. As she safely but cautiously, she's 10 meters away from the line right now. We'll make that 10 strokes, nine, eight, seven. She's there. She can drift home. She was having a few nervy moments. Podium place secured. 
And as you'll see from the unofficial results, it's a 1-3 for Ukraine. She'll walk away from this event with plenty to ponder and work on. Here she K1 winner. Leonardo Candela. Spain no. haven't had a lot to shout about in the kayaks this weekend, but this one is well worth shouting about. So now there's Devisa at the front. It'd be a good idea to have a look back. There's the Italian coach. He knows he's not going to win now, the Italian, but everything else still to play for. Good heavens. Tracking has got Fock down to force. Candela and Ivanso Both having taken him, him, which there means they're in a bunch. They they're in a bunch. Done. So this is silver and bronze to be decided. This might be a spicy Ouch. final segment of the uh, junior what, men's race. What looked like a certainty for Fock is now looking slightly shaky at best. We know the Hungarian isn't great through the portage. So if Candela gets away with Focht, I think he'll hold on to a bronze. Don't think the long, the short lap's long enough to uh, close down for the Hungarian. I just hope we don't have to read too much into how dramatic his disappearance off the lead bunch was. <laughs> I think it is pretty significant, Dave, however you, we didn't, however we, you want to look at it. We, we didn't see a mega burn coming from Devisa. Here comes the leader and a tail ender. Nice pull in to the portage. Taking his time as well. He feels like he's got all the time in the world, and I think he's right. Let's look back and see if we can see the three chasers. Nothing in sight. Even looking down the chute. Nothing in sight. Victory parade time for Spain's Victor de Visa. Smile to the crowd. He knows he's done it. Go, you good thing. Here we go. Candela doing the damage, coming into the portage. Uh, to be fair, I'd like to see him get the silver medal out of these three. I don't think he feels he deserved his penalty. Candela up out oh my word and straight off very very clean super quick the candela looks second the hungarian out well as well candela i think say oh, the distant third fucked quite literally is he's, at this stage he is he he's done <laughs> let's just say i think the tank is completely empty for oh, keats he can Aye. As an under 16, I think that arm wrestle with the big dogs has come at a cost. Put up a great fight, but just come up short on the last lap after everything he did. Candela second, I'm pretty sure. There's your winner, Devisa of Spain. He's only got to get down to the bottom and back. It would have been good to see a head to head between the Spaniard and the Italian. Is the Hungarian going to close the Italian down for at least a bit of a flurry at the end? Candela looks like he's got the goods to be able to last the next two minutes. There's a half smile etched across the face of Victor de Visa. What a great race. Hungary coming in tight to that apex turn can. All good. So hard getting around that corner. See how much boat speed is scrubbed off going around there. I think the Hungarian's going to close him down before the bottom turn. It's, I think it's one last flurry of blows before they get to that bottom Candela turn. Candela would do well to slow down at this stage. If he, <laughs> if he does everything down to the bottom turn, he's not going to have a lot left after. Then things fall in favor of the Hungarian at that stage. It's going to be very, very tight, this one. I think he does not want him alongside him going into the turn. I really think. I think the nerves and adrenaline might combine. Just stay well clear of that finish, boy.
So Candela currently holding on to silver. It's going to be doing his level. That tight. Hungarian is. He's shifted up into fifth, looking for sixth gear. Devisa at the front. Spain can get genuinely excited about this prospect. That was a great race from the youngster. Hungarian moves slightly out to the right to try and cover, try and get, he's not closing the gap as it's quickly as we thought he might. It's a long old journey. I think Leonardo Candela is running on nerves and adrenaline at this stage. Look how big those waves are now as the visa goes and turns at the bottom turn can. Does that very competently. Now he's going to duck hard right to get into the water. Which, given that it's a right-hand corner, will get away from the wind as well. The others over there. He's got so much space now. Down to the Last bottom. Last little chase oh, down to the bottom. This might be spicy. Candela, they're both traveling at the same speed. There's just nothing's changed, does it? Candela's got it, I think. Sooner or later, the Hungarian will decide that he's run out of room. It's choppy around oh, there. Oh, Candela just right, having right. to break a few strokes it as he bounces choppy through around a wave. That corner. It's definitely. Not only is it choppy, but you'll be taking on water at the same time. Candela still hanging on to that silver medal. Is he just going to put his head down and focus on the last 350 meters? Is he going to risk spooking himself by glancing over his left shoulder? No. One way forward, it's the sheltered water on the extreme right. Both of them are hugging the reeds on the right-hand side. Candela, in fact, is opening the gap on the Hungarian. Yeah. I, think the, I think the tanks are empty at the stage. I think you just see the inevitability at some point. You think, I've only got that far to go. I'm only closing at this speed. It's not enough time, and you just pull the plug slightly but Spain big win he's earned that Victor de Visa he was there yes. all the way he was always in the front he was always in the mix that's a massive result for the Took young Spaniard advantage of the Italian having a 30 second penalty I'm really happy the Italians come second he deserved that Leonardo, you have to feel for yeah. Pocht out there. He put in a good shift and it just stumbled at the last. Second place will be going to Italy in the form of Leonardo Candela. Had a silver medal at the Worlds with a silver medal at the Europeans. I think he'll be happy with that after what's happened. There'll be an element of frustration. There it is. <laughs> Vonkso, third. Pretty happy with He's, that. He'll you'll claim that for Hungary. Thomas Vonkso wrapping up the bronze medal place. Divisa and Candela exchanging courtesies. A relationship that I'm pretty sure we're going to see develop and evolve over many more years of top-level marathon racing. Ah, oh. Ouch. Under 16, punching above his weight for most of this race. Big character. He was a, he was a big force for three quarters of this race. And then I suspect there might have been a, a slow leak in the tire which came back to get him. But Keegan uh, Focht on his uh, first outing as an under-16. Brilliant result. I don't think it was a slow leak. I think it was a full blowout, Dave. He was there and then he wasn't there, just in the space of it was dramatic the time how it happened. between shots, wasn't it? He can be and super uh, proud of that outing. It's hard. He, he, he will be, but it will take him a while before he gets to it. Enoch just trying to He's overhaul Enoch. Fernandez in the last little sec. Dying seconds here. He's not going to make it. He's going to be. Fernandez too strong. Or is he going to make it? It's getting tight now. Oh. Whee! 
That is close. That's a photo finish, i got to tell you. I think Fernandez feels he got it. They'll have a better, light, better view of the finish line than we do from here. Yeah, I'm claiming parallax with our view. It's, so I think it's, it's closer than our view looked. The results have Fernandez, but, well, the track track has Fernandez. has come back on now. They both got the same time <laughs> on the on the track track. Is you out, Souza? Souza, you know, he was so good. And now yeah, he's been, I guess he got held up. I guess that was what the 30 second penalty was about, but uh, unhappy day for him. I thought he had good control in the group. I think he thought he had good control in the group. That isn't a happy boy. That is not what he came for. It'll be no well, consolation to him either that the Italian took a 30 second penalty. Yeah, That's it, that, it, that it doesn't change his life it at doesn't, all. Yeah, it doesn't compensate him no. in any way. So pencil these names that you see at the top of this results page into your diary because it's going to be heaps of fun watching. We're going to see him in K2 tomorrow morning. These same guys. There's the results of the senior women's C1. Babak, Kisban, Tishinkova, Vehrman, Makovic, Hue, Martin, Vevakova. The Ludmilla Babak era continues. Dominguez from Spain over the line in the boys' K1 as we look at that chart. Abbasia from Italy. Adam asking the question, where is Riley Smith, the other South African? He, way down, 20th. Yeah, we saw him distant. He was fourth or fifth bunch and I think has stayed there. He, yeah, I mean, long, long way down. Adam, we should see him finishing seven, relatively soon. Yes, seven minutes behind the leader. Something. Andre Kermak of the Czech Republic. Finishing alongside Daniel Zeman, the second Hungarian. Arvid Soderman of Sweden, wrapping up his race. Good chat and banter going on on the water between these athletes. Maximilian Zabo completing his 22,6 Ks. And the downwind which is blowing.